Hey guys, for today's video, in this series we are doing the Dodge Neon as I promised a while ago. If you haven't seen this series before, for these videos the first part focuses on looking back at the history of the car and all the details and specs, and then we jump to talking about the events that led to the car being cancelled and any flaws that it had. This might be a bit of a longer episode since the Neon had two different generations, the first from 1995 to 1999, and the second from 2000 to 2005. So we begin back in 1991. The Neon name was first heard when Dodge released their 1991 Neon concept car. This was not close to production ready, it just had some free thinking style features such as 4 power sliding suicide doors and no B pillar, a drop down rear window, power full length fabric sunroof, unpainted black bumpers, and a built in trash compactor. The engine in there was a 3 cylinder 1.1 liter that put out just over 100 horsepower. Skip forward a few years and the first generation of the Neon was introduced in January of 1994 as a 1995 model car and this first gen went until the 1999 model year. You could choose the Neon in either a 4 door sedan or a 2 door coupe. I'll post some different prices on screen but the Neon would start at roughly $9,000 for a base sedan and that would rise up to close to $14,000 for various coupe models. All of the generations of the Neon have had many different names depending on the market. As for the first gen, it was called the Chrysler Neon in Europe, Japan, Egypt, Australia, and South America. In Canada and the US it was released as both a Dodge and Plymouth, while in Mexico it was both a Dodge and Chrysler. Europe also got a special edition model, the Chrysler Neon CS painted in platinum. When the Neon first hit the market, it became known as the Japanese car killer in Japan because of its low production costs on top of the Japanese yen, which was losing value at the time. Japan even bought Neons just to take them apart to see how they were made. And the president of Chrysler Corporation at the time stated that, quote, There's an old saying in Detroit, good, fast, or cheap. Pick any two. We refuse to accept that, end quote. It's debatable if Chrysler was able to accomplish this because there are many issues that the Neon did have that we'll go over later. However, many did agree that the Neon was an awesome car, faster than most competitors, had more room inside, had great handling, was a success on the track, and was cheaper to make. The original model started out as base, highline, and sport, but they kept adding so many different options that it was hard to keep track after a while, especially with the different markets. You'll see on screen some of the different brand names or regions, which all had different models, such as Expresso, SE, ES, SXT, ACR, and RT. And two of the higher performing models were the ACR and RT. The ACR had upgraded track features, coming with adjustable dampers, upgraded suspension, a 3.94 final drive ratio, and had the speed limiter removed. The RT came out in 1998, and that was more intended for street use, and it had more comfort and convenience options. To distinguish them visually, the RTs had dual stripes running from the hood all the way across the top of the car, and they had funky RT badging on the doors. Every engine ever offered in the Neon was a 4 cylinder, so for the first gen, one was a 2 liter single overhead cam that made 132 horsepower and 129 pound feet of torque, while the other was a 2 liter dual overhead cam making 150 horsepower and 133 pound feet of torque. Europe also got a 1.8 liter engine version, and these were mated with the options of a 3 speed automatic or a 5 speed manual. And Neon Highline models went 0 to 60 in 9 seconds and did the quarter mile in 16.8 seconds, while the quicker RT could do those in 7.4 seconds and 15.7 seconds respectively. Some of the updates over the years are shown on screen. In 1996 and 1997, all models were changed to reduce noise and vibration, improve protection, and add more standard equipment and different features. 1998 added the RT and style models, made many fixes to the various problems of the earlier models, and saw gas mileage improve. Moving on to the second generation, this started with the 2000 model year and ended with the 2005 model year. Overall, Chrysler wanted to address most of the shortcomings of the car from the past gen while keeping the integrity and character still intact. And this car was larger, had a bigger interior, better ride quality, and less noise to name a few things. One big change was the removal of the coupe, as the Neon was only available as a 4-door sedan. Chrysler advertised that this car had over 1,000 refinements from the first gen, making it quieter, more comfortable, but that also meant it was heavier and less competitive on the track. Again, it's really hard to follow the Neon throughout the years. Plymouth was discontinued in 2001, so the last ever Plymouth Neon was a silver 4-door sedan made on June 28, 2011. And just like before, this was sold as a Chrysler Neon in Europe, Australia, Mexico, Asia, and South America, but those markets also got a Tri-Tech 1.6-liter engine offered that was built by both Chrysler and Range Rover together. 
and Canada got the Chrysler Neon until 2003, before they changed the whole name to SX 2.0 in 03. They did this solely to get away from the Neon name, so customers would be less scared of the reliability. Taking a look at 2002, prices started at $10,280 for a base S model, rising up to $13,800 by 2005. And the higher-end RT had a price tag hovering around $16,000, while the top model SRT4 was roughly $20,000. The second-gen Neon got a familiar-looking design up front, with a new taillight design and bigger wheel arches. The side profile was redesigned, with the base of the front windshield moved forward 3 inches, making it both more aerodynamic and also more like the other Chrysler sedans. 2003 got a bigger upper grille and sportier lower grille, with a redesigned bumper. And there was also a rear spoiler added that seemed to fit better than the previous one. And Chrysler added different door handles, body moldings, and new wheel designs. This Neon was longer and wider than the first gen, with a longer wheelbase and a wider track. Chrysler says this helped for a smoother ride, increased stability, and more suspension travel. And the new body structure also created a quieter ride, with full frame doors to reduce wind noise and sound deadening materials were used in the cabin for less road and engine noise coming in. On the inside, there was a roomy cabin with comfortable seats with vinyl trim and cloth upholstery and the stereo was mediocre, while the back seat and trunk had average room for the class. For many reasons, including the US, initially the only engine offered was a 132 horsepower 2 liter single overhead cam engine, but there was also an optional Magnum variation that bumped that up to 150 horsepower. And the regular Neon performance didn't change that much from the first gen, so the RT was still capable of 0-60 to 60 in 7.5 seconds, and the quarter mile in 15.9 seconds, so just a few tenths of a second slower. What everyone remembers most from the Neon was that SRT4, introduced in 2003 and around for 2004 and 2005 as well. The 03 Neon SRT4 had 215 horsepower and 245 pound-feet of torque from a 2.4 liter single overhead cam 4-cylinder with a Mitsubishi turbocharger. And to cool the engine, there was a big intercooler that is visible through the mesh grille, and there's a functional hood scoop and two inlets right below the hood to feed more air into the engine bay. 0-60 to 60 was a very respectable 5.3 seconds, with the quarter mile being done in 13.9 seconds, and at the time, this car was the second fastest stock production car in the whole Chrysler Dodge lineup, just behind the Dodge Viper. The Neon SRT also got stiffer springs, SRT tuned struts, and larger front and rear sway bars. The Neon name was actually dropped from this car for 2004, so it was called the Dodge SRT4. And for both 2004 and 2005, the Neon got bumped up to 230 horsepower and 250 pound feet of torque with bigger fuel injectors and a recalibrated engine computer. The SRT4 also had 17 by 6 inch rims, 205 50 17 tires, and a big basket handle spoiler. And the inside had a better interior as well, with a satin silver center stack, shift knob and door handles, and cast aluminum pedals. And the SRT4 seats were designed after the Vipers. Finally, before looking at the cancellation, here's a chart showing just some of the model options on the car for the last year in 2005. By that last year, the Neon was down to just SE, SXT, and SRT4. If you're interested, pause the video and check them out. The Neon became discontinued with the final car being produced on September 23, 2005 at the Belvedere Assembly Plant in Illinois. This was replaced in 2006 by the 2007 Dodge Caliber. It was also cancelled in 2002 for Australia and 2004 for Europe. It definitely left its mark, good or bad, with over 2 million cars sold in the US and Canada across 13 calendar years. It was actually very hard to find exactly why Dodge got rid of the Neon. It did have its fair share of issues, but overall it continued to sell pretty good right up until its final year of production. But I have four main reasons for the cancellation. The first is simply that the Dodge Neon is part of the reason why Chrysler tends to be known for very poor reliability. The first gen Neons had some serious mechanical issues, such as head gasket failures. There was also really poor paint finish quality, with the paint becoming brittle and peeling off in sheets. There were poor design choices, and you could not get power rear windows, and there was lots of AC issues. And these are just to name a few of the many, many concerns that customers had. Many of the problems would be fixed by the 1998 model year, and the cars would become more reliable, but not without harming Chrysler's reputation. Customers still had the negative early impressions in their minds about the awful initial reliability, and Chrysler also didn't really make any improvements public or reassure the customers that the problems were fixed, which they probably should have. And as you'll see by the Neon sales, they kept falling every single year past 1998. The Neon second gen was also plagued with issues, so much so that Allpar.com has an entire page dedicated to the common repairs and problems that the Neon had. This includes door squeaking, broken speedometers, noisy power steering pumps, engine stumbling and problems idling, 
broken wheel speed sensors, and transmission issues. The list seemingly never ends, and we've seen from the sales figures that more and more people started to turn to more reliable vehicles in the same class instead. Unfortunately, another major flaw of the Neon was poor safety. The Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, or IIHS, is a not-for-profit organization in the US, and basically auto insurance companies fund the IIHS to try to reduce car crashes, and thus the amount of money that the insurance companies have to pay out. So during testing, the first gen Neon had a poor rating for frontal crash testing, while the second gen got a marginal rating for the frontal crash, and poor for the side impact crash testing. In 2005, the IIHS also did side impact testing on 14 different small car models, hitting them with an SUV, and the Neon was deemed to be the least safe car out of the whole group. And the IIHS even said, quote, The Neon had major problems beginning with its structure. The car is a disaster. The structure is poor. If this had been a real driver in a real crash, it's likely it wouldn't have been survivable. If safety is a priority, the Neon is a small car to be avoided. End quote. And the worst part is that these negative results carried over to real life accidents where the Neon had one of the highest rates of driver deaths. The IIHS put out statistics that show the Neon had 161 driver deaths per million cars, which is well above the average for a four-door small car, which was only 103. The final reason I have today is that Daimler Chrysler made a mistake in killing off the Neon, which was still selling over 100,000 cars per year, even if it was getting older and on the decline. They chose to focus on selling trucks and SUVs and getting away from cars. And as I've said, the replacement for the Neon was the Caliber, also a small car in the form of a five-door hatchback. Many weren't a fan of this decision, and the Caliber never sold well and would get cancelled after six years. The Caliber SRT4 also was slightly outperformed by the Neon SRT4. Dodge tried to be bold and push the envelope to replace the old Neon with something fresh and new to attract new buyers, but that just didn't work out as well as they would have liked, and maybe it would have been better to just keep the Neon around. So that's the end of this video guys, thanks for watching and hopefully you enjoyed it. What do you think about the Neon? Were there other reasons for its cancellation that I missed? And would you like to see the car come back to the US? Let me know in the comment section below. And make sure to like and subscribe for more Mopar content, and I'll see you in the next video.